I'm going to go through the setup instructions here for the tutorial. So this is on a freshly installed Windows system, Windows 11. Uh, I'm assuming you have the README in front of you. And the first thing we're going to do is to install uh, the Jupyter Notebook application. Now what I recommend here is to use Miniforge, um, which you can just install using the instructions in this README file. So we just download the installer for Windows, and that should install right into your downloads folder. Uh, after it downloads, we can just open that installer. Just double click it. And then just run through the different steps here. You can just install it in the default location and use all the default uh, options. Now, if you already have um, Jupyter installed through another Conda mechanism, like Anaconda or some other some other thing, uh, that should work too. You just have to make sure that you follow the instructions in the README to install the Python local event uh, kernel package. Uh, that's probably not something you have installed by default in your Conda environment, and that needs to be installed in the same in the main environment, the default environment of Conda. So that would be the same environment that your Jupyter executable is going to be installed in. We're just going to wait for this to finish here. And once that's done, uh, you, if you go to your start menu, you should be able to see this Miniforge prompt. And that should open a, a command line. And in that command line, uh, you should have the conda executable, which means you can do conda install, and then the prerequisites for the tutorial, which is going to be the Drupalit lab, and then the, the Python local event kernel, and uh, the IPML package in this specific version. Uh, and again, if you already have um, Conda or a Jupyter environment installed, I definitely make sure that you do Conda install Python local event kernel and, and maybe also check that you have the correct version of the IPML package. And then just hit enter, let it run through. Um, it's going to take a while to resolve. And then just confirm that to proceed. It's going to take a minute. Okay, and once that's done, we can just confirm that we have the uh, kernels installed. We just do a Jupyter kernel spec list, and that should show you the Python local event kernel in addition to the standard Python 3 kernel. And we should also be able to start JupyterLab 
uh, and that should open a window in your browser. So let's close that again for now. Okay, so that was the first part of installing Jupyter. Now we'll go to the second part of installing Julia. And this is really only something you need to do if you want to follow the tutorial in Julia, uh, but I would recommend it. So you just uh, follow this link to the Julia app installer and that will give you instructions. And in, on Windows in particular, it's going to be very easy because there's a link to the Windows Store. Uh, so you can just open that and then click download and that should install it right onto your system. Well, you have to open the installer. And then just let it, let it run through. Once that's installed, it will open up a Julia REPL straight away. Oh, you might have to find it again if it disappears. That's just going to take a second because it's it's just a freshly installed Julia, so it needs to initialize itself. But after a few seconds, you should see uh, the REPL come up. Okay, so we go back to the instructions. Uh, so now the thing that we need to do is to install the iJulia package. Uh, so that's the kernel for JupyterLab uh, to connect to Julia. Uh, so we just go in the in the REPL and we type the um, bracket key, uh, which puts us into this PKG mode and then do add iJulia and then we'll download and install the iJulia package. It just takes a second to install and to precompile. Okay, so this we should allow. Okay, that's it pretty much.
So we can go out of the package mode by just typing backspace. And then uh, just to be sure, we want to install the kernel configuration, which should, should happen automatically. Uh, but you can just, you know, make sure that everything is set up correctly by using the install kernel command from the, the iJulia package. Uh, so just type out what you see in the readme and uh, press enter. And that should install everything correctly. And now we can verify that. Um, so let's just go to our uh, standard command line and try again the Jupyter kernel spec list. And what we should see now is in addition to the default Python 3 kernel and the Python local venv kernel that we installed before, we also have the Julia 1.10 kernel here. Okay, so that's the system prerequisites. And now for everything else, we're going to need the actual tutorial files. So find that code button and then depending on how your system is set up, if you already have Git and you're familiar with Git, you can use these clone uh, URLs and that would make it easier to update the tutorial if you make any changes later on. But otherwise, um, you can also just download it as a zip archive. So in that case, you would just go down here and click on zip. And that should just put the zip file in your downloads folder. So we can open that and then uh, maybe just put it on your desktop and then uh, continue to unzip it so that we have the actual files. All right, click on extract. Okay, there are the extracted files. You can open that folder. We see all the uh, the notebook files and the subfolders. So let's close that up. So now we go back to the instructions in the readme. And now the next step would be to initialize the Python project for running the actual notebooks in the tutorial. So in principle, you could skip this if you only want to do the Julia part, uh, but we're going to continue here uh, just to show you how it's done. So we're going to go back to the start menu open our standard command line. Now we have to go to the folder that contains the tutorial. So we put that on the desktop and then we unzipped it into this tutorial uh, OCT workshop 2024 master folder. Uh, and it, it actually turns out there's another folder inside of that, which is not really where we want it, but you know, it's a little tricky to unzip files. So make sure you're in the right folder. Uh, once you're in the right folder, uh, we're just gonna do what the instructions say. Uh, so let's just move this around a little so that we can see what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, so we're going to try uh, typing the uh, conda env create minus p dot venv minus f environment yml. And that's going to look at that environment dot yml file uh, for all the packages that need to be installed. Uh, so we'll just run that. And that's going to uh, take a minute.
Okay, so that's done. So let's go straight to the second part of initializing the Julia uh, environment for the Julia notebooks. Um, so again, if you don't want to use Julia at all, you don't have to do this, uh, but we're going to show it here. Um, so this, I'm assuming that in this uh, command line, you should have the Julia executable available if you install it correctly. So let's just check that. So yes, Julia is there. And now uh, you just follow the instructions in the readme. Uh, so you just type, you know, Julia minus minus project and so forth. Okay. Oh, so that actually gives us an error. I think that's because Windows doesn't deal with the, the single quotes correctly. So we can probably get it right with, with a single, with double quotes. But we can also just do it from the REPL. Uh, so we just start Julia again. Uh, we say using PKG, the, the built-in package manager. And then, um, well, actually, actually hang on. Uh, so first we have to make sure that we activate the current folder. So that's the equivalent of doing the minus minus project equal dot uh, from the, the previous command. And after that, we can run pkg instantiate. And that will uh, comp download and uh, compile all the packages and all of their dependencies, everything that will be used in the, the project. So everything that's needed to run the tutorial notebooks. So you'll see this installing all of the packages. Uh, there's actually quite a large number of them, um, several hundred, 318 is showing right now. Uh, this might actually still increase, uh, but it's, you know, it's a large number of packages. And in fact, this whole procedure, um, depending if you do it the first time where it has to download everything and, and install everything and, and compile everything from scratch, uh, this could take quite a long time, uh, depending on your system, depending on how many cores you have. This could take uh, 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, so at this point, you might just uh, take a coffee break or, uh, you know, do it over your lunch break or something like that. And just it, it will just run by itself uh, and, and install everything and then pre-compile everything. Uh, so we'll just let it do that. So that, that's kind of now the first step is just installing packages. And then a, a lot of these packages have binary dependencies, which, which often is compiled Fortran code or something like that, um, that is, that is automatically packaged. So it's going to download all these artifacts with, with binary code. And that's actually something where if, depending on what kind of like, um, malware scanners you have, um, sometimes they really, uh, you know, they try to scan all of these artifacts with a lot of binary data in it, and it's somewhat unusual. Um, so sometimes on Windows, people have found that it really freezes up their system. Um, so you might just want to disable your anti-malware software if it's something unusual or something weird. Uh, you might just want to disable that temporarily while you're doing this installation. Um, that's, you know, just, just as a recommendation.
So now it downloaded everything and now it's going to start pre-compiling. Uh, so there's again a lot of packages that it needs to pre-compile and this only happens the first time you install something. Um, so you know if you if you initialize the project again at some later point uh, this is going to go a lot faster uh, but it's just going to run through all the packages and, and pre-compile them. So incidentally, you're, you're seeing here these weird boxes with a question mark in front of the packages. Um, that's a problem with Unicode. So the default font, default Unicode font that's used in a Windows terminal doesn't really show a lot of uniform, Unicode characters. Um, so if you want to fix that, there's instructions in the README for how to install a, a different font called Julia Mono. Uh, which isn't technically specific to Julia. Uh, it's just because Julia has a, leans into Unicode a lot. Uh, so that's a font that's specifically designed to have a very complete range of, of Unicode symbols, uh, especially things used in scientific uh, sort of notation. And that, that is actually something that I would recommend if you want to use Julia sort of on a long-term basis. Uh, I, I would recommend that you uh, install it as your default monospace font and also, you know, set up your terminal, maybe get a better terminal emulator uh, than the default terminal uh, and, and make sure that you have that font set up. And then, you know, this would, I don't know what symbol this would be, but, um, you know, it, it, it would be uh, something nicer. Uh, but that's something that you should figure out on your own, uh, depending on how much you're going to do this in the future. Anyway, so this is going to take a while. So just going to skip ahead here to the end. This might take about 20 minutes or so if it's a fresh system. Okay, and then once we're done, we can just exit the Julia REPL by pressing Control D. And we'll be back in our standard command line, so now we can start the Jupyter Lab. Okay, and that will open up the Jupyter Lab itself. Okay, and now for both the Python and the Julia version, we have these Hello World notebooks just to verify that everything is working correctly. So we'll open that for the Python version. And um, well, you just you know you just go through this. Uh, also, we'll just we'll just run through it here uh, to make sure everything is working correctly. Uh, so we'll just you know make sure that we can run some Python. Uh, we'll make sure we have the project environment initialized correctly, so we can load the the quad of package, which is one of the packages we'll be using. And I, I also just want to note that if you run into any problems with this, uh, so specifically if you can't get this local .venf kernel to work, uh, what you could do is you could switch the kernel to the default Python kernel, uh, and then use this um, um, pip install matplotlib uh, with the percentage sign in front, as you could just copy that into a new cell and use that to install all of the project prerequisites, but that would then go into your default, uh, into your default conda environment, which usually you wouldn't want to do. You usually want to keep your default environment clean, uh, but as a last resort, you could do that and then you just have to make sure that in any of the tutorial notebooks, you switch the kernel from this local.venf kernel, if it doesn't work, uh, to the default kernel. Um, so that's just, you know, that's just a fallback that you could use. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, we'll check out the, that the visualization shows up. Um, so we were using matplotlib. So these any kind of plot that we're doing should show up right in the notebook. And um, there's also the for one of the examples, there's going to be an interactive visualization. Um, so we can activate that. And uh, for these visualizers, we can just drag them with the mouse. Uh, and there's you know there's also the question of this IPMPL uh, package that should be in the right version. And just for the rest of it. Uh, you know, you can you can test out the various features of the Jupyter Notebook. 
uh, just to be a little bit familiar with it, uh, like how to type Unicode, uh, how to get help on functions, and so forth. Okay, and we also have one of these for the Julia version. So again, you know, depending on which uh, version of the tutorial you want to follow, if you want to do the Julia version, then we have a Hello World notebook here that again, we can check that we can run some Julia code and that we're in the right version. And then, uh, you know, double check that we have the project environment activated correctly. So if you didn't do the previous steps, um, that, that we just did before we started the Jupyter Notebook server, uh, this would actually do that as well, but it would take a very long time. Like it could take, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so again, you could, you could take a coffee break, but now because we already did it, uh, just before this, uh, this should be, you know, this might still compile one or two things, uh, but it should be relatively quick. Uh, so just take like maybe, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or so. So just, uh, we'll just let that, let that run. It's still gonna pre-compile a couple of things that it didn't pre-compile for whatever reason the first time around. Okay, well, that's it. So now we can check that we can actually load one of the packages that's going to be used. And that works. Uh, we'll also check all the other packages. And again, the first time you run something in Julia, it's going to do um, some compilation in the background. Um, so the first time you run something, it's going to take a few seconds longer than if you run it again. Um, so that's just something to expect. Uh, also, similarly, uh, for the the plotting, first time we load the, the plotting package, there's still going to be some background compilation happening. Uh, that's just uh, the first time you run it. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So it's compiling the extension to actually show the plots inside of the notebook right now. Okay. And the same thing with actually doing a plot. The first time you do a plot, it, it takes a little bit longer. And then the, the subsequent plots are going to be much, much faster. Okay, so this is going to run you through some of the basic uh, Julia sort of concepts. Um, there's also in one of the notebooks where we actually run Python code from within Julia. This is somewhat optional. Um, so you can go through this, you can set this up, make sure that it works here. Uh, so this line in particular, uh, you're going to have to make sure that it's referencing the correct Python executable. Uh, and and if, if it is, then um, you should be able to import packages from the Python environment if you set that up. So for example, matplotlib here or qtip, uh, and you can, you can check that it works. If it, if it doesn't work, it's not really that important for the tutorial. So you could just skip this, um, but it's, it's something nice to have. Okay, and, and then there's going to be some explanations of the, the Jupyter features again. Uh, so again, we have the, the Unicode support, um, which is very nice. Uh, and how to get help, and then the rest of the um, notebook is going to give you some extra Julia syntax tips. Maybe if you're not that familiar with Julia yet, but maybe you have some background in Python, uh, there's going to be uh, some some tips that make it easier to read the Python code in the in the actual notebooks. But that's something you can go through by yourself.